Okay, um, now I'm going to tell you guys about my uh, college years. Um, as of yet, I'd only been diagnosed with situational depression and uh, had a suicide attempt as a teenager. Um, I actually went to a nursing um, school. I lived in the dorm. Uh, and I found myself, well, at first, I realized right away that the social anxiety was not going to fly. I was not going to be a very effective nurse if I didn't somehow manage it. I, I, I didn't, I uh, never got rid of it. I just learned to disguise it and function with it, it, its existence better. And when an instructor said, who would like to volunteer? Who would like to be first? I forced myself until I got some sort of desensitization. But it was still always difficult. Um, and when we would have clinicals, which is when we would do our nursing in the hospital on the floor, interacting with um, nurses and other students and instructors and patients and patients' families. I would be so anxious days before that I couldn't sleep. And that would be two days a week in the beginning and then three days a week towards the end. So nix that, those nights for sleep. Um, and then there's the typical weekend, hanging out with my friends, staying up late, partying. Uh, on occasion, I wasn't a big partier, but I did stay up late with my friends a lot, so I wasn't getting some sleep on the weekends. So, um, things got out of control, and I'm going to get to that in a second. The other thing I noticed right away in nursing school, that I was around a lot of really straight folks, straight girls girly girls, straight, you know, I wasn't a butch or anything, but I wasn't, um, in fact, I'm really girly now compared to I was the punk rocker that I was. Um, and it was uncomfortable being the only person, I just wasn't like a lot of girls that had always wanted to be a nurse since they were like two. I wasn't like that. That was an idea that came to me, someone brought up to me, uh, just the year before I, you know, applied. Um, I just wanted to get out away from my family, independent, and support myself. Um, something that used my some of my intelligence. And um, but I got a lot of attention, positive attention, from especially my grandparents. Oh, she's going to nursing school. My parents. Oh, it was just lovely. So I wanted to give them more of what they were wanting. I thought it would make me happy, making them happy. So I decided to pretend to be straight. Um, I studied what the other girls, <laughs> how they behaved and the things they said and what they did. And I got me a boyfriend, a pretty serious, steady boyfriend. He went to a college, was in a fraternity, very guy-like. Um, and eventually he did become my best friend, but, um, and it wasn't really fair for me to do that to him. But I had this image in my head that I was going to give my family everything they wanted, and what I thought they wanted was for me to be a nurse, to get married, and give them grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And I thought that would be enough to make me happy. And I thought it would be easier pretending to be straight in the world than being myself. So there, put that stress in there. Add it all up, and the obsessive thought started. I became obsessed with inst one instructor, and then later in the uh, my college years, it went to another instructor. Um, it wasn't like a crush or anything. I was having... Uh, persistent, repetitive, non-stop, 
disturbing, violent, sexual thoughts about these women. They also involve their husbands or just faceless men. And the only way I could get any relief from pressure of these thoughts was to do something in the physical world, like look up their name in the phone book or the directory, look up their address, but then I needed more, and I was doing that more often. Then I needed more, so I would look up where they lived on a map, and I would look at that, and look at that, and I needed more, calling their houses and hanging up, stalking behavior. <laughs> Um, and then I needed more, taking the bus out to their houses and walking, go, just to go by their houses. I would, I, I, I talk friends into like, hey, it's a great prank. Let's go by their house and, and so I wouldn't be alone in my, you know, but I didn't tell them what was really going on. I couldn't tell anyone what was going on. I spent my entire college years in a tornado of violent sexual thoughts, of feeling guilty and ashamed and disgusting, and I was on overdrive. But I got A's, I did well in my clinicals, and I graduated with honors. Um, and I was hoping that once college was over, this mess would end. I wouldn't. I could would be able to just move on. Um, and it would go away and I could put it behind me, never to reappear. There were times when I was, when it was going on in the thoughts and I was entertaining them and I felt high as a kite. I didn't know I was bipolar. I didn't know I was manic. I didn't know. I thought I was special. I thought I was so much better than everyone else. I was just totally grandeur, just, um, and then in the next month I would be hating myself and disgusted with myself and pissed off that I couldn't stop it. This, I knew it wasn't normal. And so I had one instructor pull me aside. I, she thought I was on drugs. She's like, your pupils are very dilated. Are you okay? But um, just to let you all know, my, no my pupils are uh, normally very dilated. That's normal for me since I was very little. <laughs> I get comments all the time. Um, but she thought I was on drugs. And I think she talked to the two instructors that I'd been stalking and I have no idea if they ever figured it out if it was me if they had I was even doing anything but they called me in my last year towards the end they called me into like a sort of intervention that they were really concerned about me that my behavior was a little odd and um oh but I reassured them that I was just under some stress, and I, I, I explained that, well, my dorm room is just a big mess, and if once I get that situated, I'll be fine. And I've done that before in Mania. If I could just get this cleaned up, I won't be mad. I won't feel this way anymore. That's all I need. It's a little organization, you know, and I told them that after graduation, I'll be fine. It's just been stressful. So I think they knew that I was just psycho. <laughs> and I needed medication bad. <laughs> but it was true that a lot of it had to do with um, the stress of being in college and not sleeping and the social anxiety and just the pressure of being a nurse and trying to be straight when I wasn't. You know, my boyfriend's introducing me to all his friends and um, I'm eyeing his friends, girlfriends and wives. That's stressful. So that was college, the whirling dervish. I was um, in constant motion pretty much the whole, whole, my brain was just chaos the whole time. But I, 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 I got it together just for class, just enough for class and just enough for clinicals. And graduated with honors. How do we do it? We people with bipolar. I don't know.